Hello, and welcome back to the Iron Man. At the start of this episode, we're just going to sneak in a cheeky little prayer level here at Vyers. So there is 65 prayer, only 10 more levels to go until we have the requirement of 75 for Elf City, which is obviously what we are aiming for. So I'm back to killing Vyers. This time I'm just killing some of the lower level Vire Watch outside of Mire Ditch, um, because really the only reason I'm here is not necessarily for the drops or XP or anything. I'm just here for the corpses. And the reason to kill regular Virewatch and collect their corpses instead of using the Sun Spear to burn them is because when you burn corpses using the cremation method instead of burning them using the, with the Sun Spear, it gradually upgrades the damage of all your blister wood type weapons, and that does include the Sun Spear. So it's worth investing to in the future. I think it caps out at 500 corpses burnt. However, there is an achievement for 200 corpses burnt. It's here in the hard Mauritania diary. So I'm at least going to do 200. I'm going to see how it is. Um, I'm not. I'm not positive, and it's really hard to get information on exactly how much damage it boosts your weapons by for getting the full 500 burnt, so if anyone has it, that would be awesome. If it's like a plus one bonus, though, <laughs> it obviously isn't worth it. I'm assuming it's more than that. I'll burn 200, see, see how awful and grindy that is, and if it's not too bad, we'll keep going and do the full 500, or otherwise we'll wait until we have like soul split and better gear before we do that. Okay, I think that's 200 Vire Corpses, technically a little bit more than that. I stopped being dumb and I just went back to killing Vire Lords and Vire Ladies instead of killing the Vire Watch because the drops are way better, so why not kill these, even if they take a little bit longer? Okay, this is the painful part of the grind for burning Vire Corpses. I'm finishing up my last inventory of Sacred Oils. I should have at least 200 of them now. Yeah, you just need to make a lot of Sacred Oils, but just took a couple hours. I mean, it's not hard at all to do, it just it's just grindy. Okay, I've done some work on my Herbler tab. I've turned just about every single thing that I could in my bank into potions, other than saving some herbs that will be used to make extremes down the line. And that, in combination with a couple days of Jack of Trades, is going to get me up to 75 Herbler. So now I can go reclaim that book that I got from the Vampire Quest and get my 275k free Herbler XP. Okay, I've just been leaving the XP book here with Ivan for safekeeping, so we'll grab that. And uh, yeah, time to get a whole bunch of Herblore. I don't know how many levels this is going to get me. It looks like that was over half of one. Um, so this may get me up to 77, or it may be close. So yeah, 275k XP, that is a lot. And that gets us um, about two Jack of Trades away from 77. But we also got the requirement for Plague Send along the way, which is pretty sweet. Okay, I have my first 27 Columbarium keys from Burning Vires. I think what I'll do is I'll open up all of these loots, and then at the end I'll just show off my inventory really quickly so you guys can see what kind of loot you get from Burning Vires. I know the loot isn't like crazy overall exciting or anything, but you can occasionally get treasure trail items, so if I get anything that can be disassembled into a fortunate com component, that's really what we're looking for. Okay, first inventory, we got two Torstal Seeds, that's not bad, and just a lot of high-level grimy herbs, which I will take that. Inventory number two, not quite as exciting. Less high-level herbs and uh, no seeds or anything. Inventory number three, got some more Torstal Seeds, got some Crystal Keys going on, not too bad. Okay, next inventory, this is probably our worst one yet. Uh, one Torstal Seed, I guess, but the rest is not exciting. Okay, this inventory just got a lot of rune alking stuff. That's about it. Well, it's not a treasure trail item, but I did get an uncommon drop here with the dragon spear. I'm sure that's probably used for some kind of elite treasure trail step, so I'll hold on to it. Second to last inventory done, and the last one we only have 11 more vire corpses to go. Okay, I've now burned 200 vires, which means the Avandis flail slash blisterwood weapons slash sun spear has been upgraded four times in its damage we're still a little unclear just how much extra damage it's getting but the real reason or i should say the accompanying reason that i wanted to burn all those fire corpses is if we scroll down to hard mauritania um cast bloom with the flail of Andis upgraded with 200 burnt corpses so i haven't done the bloom part yet but i i now have the corpses burnt in order to do that so that was a key step we were going to need in the future for the diary anyway, so we just got it out of the way. Okay, I'm getting the easy skill done first. This is 75 Fletching. So now we just have Herblore, Attack Range, Fire Making to do. 
Okay, we are just about finishing up my first ever gargoyles task. This task has been awesome so far for GP. I started out this task with, I think, 1.7 mil in my coin pouch, and we'll see what the total is after I turn in this contract. The contract is going to give us another 67k, so almost 1 mil in cash, just from all the elks and coin drops that you get from gargoyles. That's huge, because I really need a lot of money for summoning training right now, so a couple more gargoyles tasks would be awesome for getting us there. Since my current slayer task is aquanites, which are really st spread out and I kill them with range, I think it's time to get our legendary pet. I forget who, but someone in the comments said that I can just get a legendary pet with premier reward tokens, so thankfully I remembered that before I left for my task, um, and I'm just going to unlock the blood pouncer pet here. The advantage of the legendary pets is they have abilities, and currently at his growth stage he only has one, but that's okay because we only need this one. Um, basically he just runs around and picks up drops and deposits them in your inventory, which is really great for tasks such as Aquanites where the monsters are spread out and you're killing them from distance so you can't just pick up everything using the loot screen. So this is going to be super handy. Well, I got through my first Aquanites task, but that was rough. The range XP is pretty good. I got most of a range level just from this one task. I mean, they give a lot of XP per kill, but they do a lot of damage to you, so I did have to go and bank for food, and their drops are pretty crap. Thankfully, when we get to Curadel, she no longer assigns Aquanites by default. It's a toggle option to turn it on. I'm not going to be clicking that button, I can tell you that right now. But our next task is going to be Gargoyles again. Ooh, that is GP. This should be the last kill for another skill that I've been working on. 78 range, did all of it through Slayer. I think just three range levels, 75, 378. Did not take too long, but uh, that's what we need to wield the Reforged Sun Spear. So now we have magic and range done, just need to get two more attack levels. Well, I wasn't expecting a second level in the same task. Admittedly, I wasn't paying too much attention to the XP bubbles up top, but we just hit 80 Slayer as well, only a few kills later. So that's uh, that unlocks all the Jadinko stuff, as well as Crystal Shapeshifters, and I didn't know Revenants are now a Slayer creature, but apparently you have to have AD Slayer to kill Revenants now. I wonder if that's like an anti-bodying thing? That would be my first guess. I spacebarred right past the screen by accident, but I just did get Desert Strike Worms, my first task ever um, from Duradel here. So this task could be the full Slayer Helm. Well, unless I get the drop and loss kill here, it's not going to be this task. All right, we're still on the hunt for Desert Strike Worm tasks once again. Okay, the Slayer combat training, at least in terms of gaining levels for River of Blood, is now done. We just reached 78 attack. This is on my first ever Necreals task, which I'm learning is a decent task for melee XP. And I like the prayer that you get with the Infernal Urns, but the drops kind of suck, so they're a little bit disappointing. We're, we're so close. We're at 81 Slayer right now. We're very close to the levels where you start getting like good Slayer tasks where you really want the drops, but still don't have very many of those unlocked at this point. It is time once again to thank goodness for the Jack of Trades aura, because without it, I'm not sure how else we would have gotten 80 or blur. It is done, gentlemen. Okay, I'm here to talk to King Roald because I just finished All Fired Up. Did not take very long. It might be one of the shortest quests in the game, I think. And we're going to get 5.5k fire making XP, which just happens to be the exact amount of XP I needed to hit 76 fire making. It's almost like it was planned or something. Okay, it's finally time. We're starting our first ever Grand Master quest. Got all the requirements done for River of Blood. Let's get to it. Okay, you might notice a new weapon at my back, that is the Reforged Sun Spear, which is the primary reason to do this River of Blood quest. Probably the best overall weapon for Iron Man, just because of how versatile it is. Oh, and we get a pretty sweet amount of XP too. Once again, just like the previous quest, three chapters, 75k XP each. We also get some Herblore, Fire Making, Fletching, Mining. All in all, it's a lot of XP. But like I was saying, the Sun Spear, it does all three combat styles, it's tier 78, and it is augmentable and very cheap to replace, so you can disassemble it and train invention with it very easily. So up until the late game, this really is like the ultimate Iron Man weapon. This weapon is strong enough to use it in PVM, it's definitely good enough to use it for Slayer, and since it's like so cheap to use and replace and train invention with, 
and it does all three combat styles, this is what I'm going to be using for a long time for like all of my combat and slayer training and definitely a decent amount of PVM as well. As an additional reward after the quest, we also get to craft one of the blood essences. I'm likely just going to go with the vampiric one here. And the reason for that, this is not the one Vanescula would have chosen, apparently, but the reason I wanted the Vampiric one is we just really lack healing until we unlock Soul Split, which I'm only 68 prayer, so we're a long way away from that. But just any sort of item that can increase healing and sustain, especially when like PVMing and stuff, is going to be huge. So I have the Vampiric Blood Essence. It's very similar to the vamp the Vampirism Aura and how it functions. It's a, It works a little bit differently, like it'll give you a small heal, but then after it activates it'll give you a larger heal on your next hit. So I'm not sure how it compares to the Vampirism Aura exactly, but it's, it's similar to that. So that is going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. It feels really good getting River of Blood done. This is our first Grandmaster quest. And the next is going to be not that far behind because now that River of Blood is done and the Sun Spear is unlocked, I am setting my sights on Plague's End. So I have quite a bit of questing. Unfortunately, it's not like uh, this previous one we just completed. I had the Vampire Quest done already uh, going into this week preparing for River of Blood. I just had to get the skills. Well, for Plague's End, I need to do a lot of quests as well. So I, I have a whole bunch of elf quests to do, starting with Morning's End Part 1 and continuing through um, Within the Light. And we still have to get 75 Crafting, 75 Prayer, and 75 Summoning. The most difficult out of these is actually going to be the Summoning. I'm not looking forward to uh, grinding out all the money and charms that we'll need for that, but that's what I'm going to start working on now. So thank you for watching. I will see you next time, and don't forget to join my friends chat. The name is just Munkle Zunkie, same as the name of my YouTube channel, and I'll see you there. Until then, goodbye.